Hi, I'm Spencer Ziegler. I'm Serena Halstead. Hi, and I'm Melissa Smith. Welcome back, everyone, to Season 2 of our Data Lit podcast. As a reminder, Spencer, Serena, and I are all employees of the Wake County Public School System here in North Carolina. So when we began this project a year ago as an attempt to provide continued professional learning, we were in the middle of a pandemic and all working from home. However, today we are pleased to share with you that we are actually back in person recording and we are socially distanced and you can't see it. So when we recorded our first trailer, we had shared that we um, sort of each felt that the skills around assessment literacy and data literacy were vital to educators because of all the assessments and data that educators encounter in their daily lives. And so last season, we focused on several topics that were around assessments and feedback. So this season, we will introduce some topics around data, including data literacy skills for classroom teachers. We're also thinking about sharing skills about using rubrics more effectively. And also some time will be spent about grading considerations, especially after a pandemic. So guys, in your opinion, what does it mean to be data literate? So I was thinking that it's the ability to find, analyze, and apply data to reach some kind of desired goal, Um, and particularly when there's complications, the the ability to to know what to do with that, you know, as like, for instance, a global pandemic and how that affects the data that you're getting and using. So, you know, if you want to know A, B, and C, that ability to look and say like, okay, this data source tells me a lot about A, but not really B and a little bit about C, so let me find a different data source that's going to help with C, and the ability to kind of triangulate, to figure out what each piece of data tells you and what it doesn't tell you, and how you can interpret and use them to get at some goal. So your idea of data literacy sounds like what I would think lately, especially around the pandemic, in terms Mm -hmm. of information literacy. And I've been sort of swirling in my head, so is data literacy and information literacy the same thing? It's like, how do we deal with information that we're getting? I like that. Um, how do you deal with it, that critical thinking piece of it, right? So just paralleling from what you said, Spencer, it's the ability to read it and analyze it, but then also think critically about the data that you have because what it, the data that you collect um, during the pandemic versus when it was not pandemic, right. yes, for example, we're still collecting data on how students are doing in class, but then that data was collected in two different instances, and how do we interpret it differently? Yeah, and that kind of gets, it's just, I feel like before in the last couple of years, I kind of thought of like educational data literacy as a separate entity. But now I can kind of see really that like, no, it's the same underlying skills, the same data literacy skills that is going to allow a teacher to look at a few different assessments and a few different pieces of I don't know, behavior data and come to some conclusions is really the same thing to look at like, oh, what is, you know, the infection rate versus the vaccination rate versus these kind of things there. So I can see why it just makes you not only a more effective educator, but a more effective human. So I have to say, for me, um, when I first started teaching, if you had asked me that question, what does it mean to be data literate in the classroom, I had a very simplistic view, right? So mm-hmm. for me, data li- being data literate was the ability to find the average of all of yeah. my scores, <laughs> and be able to like make a chart should my principal come and say, oh, I need you to show me, you know, like a spread of proficiency of how yeah. your kids are doing. Right. That was data literate for me. Mm-hmm. If I could find average, yeah. and I could make a bar chart. <laughs> like the embodiment of Excel formulas. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. Not even Excel I'm formulas. I'm a walking pivot table. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wasn't even in pivot tables. <laughs> Melissa, I'm with you. I am with you. It's just knowing that, okay, here are some students, high flyers, there are some middle ones, not digging. So for me to be data literate is digging deeper into what you're seeing with the numbers, right? So yes, the high flyers might get this, but what more do they need? And yes, students are not performing well. What is causing this? Yeah. Is it there's some English language barrier? What's going on with this? Is it that they're being absent more often than the others? Right? So looking at numbers, the numbers alone, there's more behind that number. So to be data literate, you have to dig deeper to see what's going on behind these See, numbers. and I didn't see that as being data literate when I was a teacher, right? So investigating the data, like yeah. those, now I asked those questions, but I didn't see that as being data literate. I saw that as like, well, that's what you do as a good teacher, right? Right, right. and that, that's, and actually I say, I'm thinking I did the same, where I thought data literacy is only, like in core, 
as a mathematics thing. Mm -hmm. But now we're seeing, but like, no, being data literate also means that you're applying the scientific method. It also means that you're pulling in the social studies aspects and that you're thinking about what is the context around this. And you're pulling in the ELA um, in that like, okay, how do I communicate this so it can actually like affect change? Mm -hmm. So it's pulling all. And of course, all the, the specials in the other classes too. But yeah, you get the right. point. So, so being data literate, to me, then you're arguing with the data. You're not just taking it at, like right, you're not taking it at face value. Yeah. You're digging deeper to see where is this coming from? What contributed to this? Yeah. And so that whole idea of data literacy, I wish that was taught to us in teacher's college. Yes, because I thought being data literate, just get your student score and know how mm -hmm. to group them, not realizing what contributed to these scores. So I like that, like arguing with the data or being critical with the data. Yeah, I like critical, critical of yeah. the data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we think about this series, then, when did you realize that being data literate was important to your role? Either, you know, here where you are in central office or like when you were in, cl in the classroom? I would definitely say being here in this office, data research and accountability, that's when I've started really paying close attention to my data. And I'm thinking, I'm feeling really bad because coming from the classroom perspective, I wish somebody was there to walk me through this, talk me through this. Because yeah. now that I'm seeing, I'm, now that I'm reflecting on what I used to do with what I had with data, and now that I'm, I'm here where I can get persons to help me interpret it, make sense of it, I'm like, I wish I can go back now and correct all of this. So I would say I think that I'm really owning data literacy since I've been in this um, department. Yeah, and I think similar. I feel like I started to realize that this is a skill that I needed to develop when I was in the classroom where I felt like I knew enough to see that there were some of these kind of big, I don't know, pernicious problems, like, I don't know, opportunity gap, those kind of things. Right. But I didn't know enough about how to collect and analyze the data to figure out precisely what was going on mm -hmm. and to have a systemic research-based data-based approach to it. Right. So I think that that kind of prodded me into thinking like um, something I got to learn more about. And I like it, Serena, how you put it, that it wasn't like a binary, you either are data literate or you're not, mm -hmm. but it, it's a continuous cycle of improvement as you learn more and more about these things. Right. There is no perfection here, but that's, I think, what started me on the path and definitely and part of it is just that I have the, the benefits in my position now of time that I didn't necessarily when I was in the classroom and I had a list of 50 things to be doing at any given minute that that allowed me to, to kind of learn more about this. That hopefully through this podcast, we can pass on to teachers because, yeah, y'all don't have the time that maybe mm -hmm. I do. Mm -hmm. Right. And for me, it was... Um, I guess doing evaluations and I, one program that I had to um, evaluate was about data driven decision making. Mm -hmm. Try to say that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was just like, oh, because, you know, they always say use your data to make decisions. Well, that's yeah. like a cliche to a teacher. Of yeah. course, what else would I do? Mm -hmm. Right. But like there was this whole program and it had like a whole framework and stuff. And I was in studying that so that I can evaluate the programs. So it's like, oh, all of these aspects and all of these skills make up data. I think they talked about data literacy. And I was just like, oh, because, again, just the sound or the thought of literacy of mm -hmm. itself to me is like, oh, that's an ELA thing. But as a math teacher, I know that there is number literacy, right? Yeah. And so it's just like, oh, data literacy, like what would that look like? So it's again, for me, it was that role. And then again, as becoming more of a coach to teachers that I realize, oh, I need to be for my area as well and have a better understanding. Because like you said, Serena, we're not really taught all of this mm -hmm. when we're in teacher's college. Yeah. So it is helpful to kind of, you know, expand on this and I like that idea that it's like you're a continuous learner yeah. you're becoming more and more data literate in your data literacy journey and you know as you mentioned we're talking about this whole idea of being data literate so it's not just understanding it now for yourself but being able to communicate it with others mm -hmm. being able to engage others in looking at the data with you and saying okay is this data appropriate is it misleading can you um, not argue per se, but can you effectively communicate to someone why this data is appropriate to use? Can you engage them in that conversation and lead them into looking at the data properly, right? So being data literate covers that as well. Communicating it, understanding it, 
and communicating it effectively with any group that you're working with. And I like how you say that because it means that data literacy is not just for teachers, right? Yeah. Like principals need to be data literate, administrators need to be literate. I think even our board members need to be data literate, mm -hmm. right? It's not something that is just solely the, the responsibility of classroom teachers because mm -hmm. right. there's data all around us. Yeah. Right, right. So when we think of our second season, Ooh. Mm -hmm. And the potential to get, I know, <laughs> we got picked up. <laughs> the potential to get a Grammy Award. I don't even know if they do Grammys for a podcast, but I'm putting it out there into the universe. Um, what is a topic that you are excited about or looking forward to? So, yeah, mine, not so much a topic, but I'm just looking forward to more interviews this season. Yeah. You know, towards the back end, we started to dip our toes into that, that kind of format. And I really, Enjoyed it. And in fact, we're, we're kicking off the second season with an um, interview with a prominent uh, educational researcher uh, and author. And I, I'm looking forward to getting more voices in. I mean, that can be, you know, professional writers and researchers and stuff, but that can also, I would love it to be, you know, Wake County practitioners, teachers, administrators, those kind of things. So if there's anyone that you would like us to interview, including yourself, um, yeah, let us know. You can uh, contact us at www.wcpss.net slash data lit. So let us know who we should interview. So as you say that, so um, I'm looking forward to our grading conversation because mm -hmm. I know that brings hairs on the back of a lot of people. But I think we're going to learn a lot because grading is so complex, right? Yeah. And for me, I see grading as a language. Mm -hmm. It's the language that we speak in our class. Um, hmm. between teachers and, and students. So I am very much looking forward to what we can learn from uh, experts in our field. Serena? And just listening to both of you, you're more wanting that interview with those professionals in the field. And Melissa, you're looking for um, that grading conversation. And I'm just thinking about that whole data literacy part of it. As you yeah. mentioned, with grading, I'm looking at, yes, we are doing grading. What perfect time to tie those two together, mm -hmm. being data literate about your grades. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So I'm looking for that. And especially, as you mentioned, Spencer, I'm looking for those experts. Apart from our voices, we know some things, but then we want to hear what others have to say. Other experts in the field who've been there, done that. We are definitely excited to hear what they have to say about our topics that we've chosen for this um, season. So, yeah. So I hope that you guys will join us. As Spencer said, you can always check us out on our uh, website, www.wcpss.net forward slash data lit. You can reach us there with your questions, your comments, and you'll also find any show notes. I want to thank uh, Maya Smith from More Square Magnet for the music supplied for this episode. Also, special thanks to Chris Zirkel for production assistance. And that's all for today. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye.